I find that that oftentimes it's just those kind of um, circumstances that that seem to be a challenge or to be most difficult, um, where where in which you just don't know what to say or you're not prepared, and and you even feel there's temptations to your mind. That those are are often the very kind of situations and environments that the spirit will use, you know, to to bring you through uh, to a sense of true forgiveness. And I know for myself, um, around sickness and death, I had an eerie feeling around hospitals. Um, uh, whenever I would go into hospitals, it was kind of an eerie feeling. Or, or when my parents would take me to these, um, to funeral homes, you know, to see these dead bodies, uh, it was just kind of an eerie feeling. Like, you know, come on, I'm just playing, I'm having fun out in the creek, and then you're taking me to see these, these dead bodies, you know, is this, what's, is this, it's almost like it was a family duty or something, you know, to go and look at this wood casket and this, like, cold looking, you know, lifeless body and everything. It was a weird feeling, but, but again, I, I look at that as, that was part of the Spirit taking me, letting me, using those kind of things so I could start to face those feelings that I had around death in there. And then when I started to open up spiritually and open up more and more and more, then actually uh, I found myself at one point being guided by the Spirit to go become a hospice volunteer. And that's not something David would have selected. There was this thing around sickness and death, but actually the Spirit saying, oh come on, let's go very close, let's get an up-close look, like on a daily basis of at hospice. It was very, very helpful for me because I was working with the Course and, or I was working with my mind more, more accurately on, on, on looking at my thoughts, my feelings, and my perceptions, and really tuning into the Spirit to guide me in certain ways. And all these profound, miraculous experiences happened on the hospice ward which was, wouldn't have been something that I would have actually been drawn to, but it was more like the spirits had come, we'll do it this way. And over the years I've had a number of, of experiences which seem to involve what the world would call sickness and death that were very, very mind-expanding experiences around near-death um, experiences and near-death conferences and people who had out-of-body experiences and symptoms and and, you know, different things around those topics. So it's really that it kind of, the Spirit used them to stretch my mind and expand my mind. How do I avoid sickness if my friend, you know, or my friends have cancer or so on and so forth? The Spirit's not big on avoiding anything. It's more like you, you pray and you ask to be used in the most helpful way and you, you say, use me. Uh, I don't know what to say, what to do, but you know, I know you're with me and just be with me as I go in to these situations. So I'm not going to try to avoid people or situations or I'm not going to try to avoid cancer. You know, I'm going to say, okay, you know, lesson or miracle principle number 23, I think it is, uh, you can heal the sick and raise the dead because you made sickness and death and can abolish them both. Wow, that's, now that's, before you go to visit your friend with cancer, that's a lesson to read, or a, a principle to read. That's a pretty powerful principle, when you really just start to give yourself over to it and say, okay, use me, is there anything uh, that you have to say before I go? Yes. <laughs> you can, Heal the sick and raise the dead, because you made sickness and death and can abolish them both. Okay, <laughs> you know, like, whoa, you know, but that's what you're going to get when you give yourself over to the Holy Spirit. And I had a number of those experiences where I just thought, you know, I would say, are you sure, are you sure? And it would be like this, yes, go, go, go. So for someone that seemed to be very shy and reserved, you know, it was like I was kind of thrown into the, the fire or to the lion's den time and time and time again. And that was actually very helpful. I can say right now, uh, it was extremely helpful. But 
if I had relied on David's past learning and David's personality self, it would have been, let's just stay on the sidelines and uh, maybe see what somebody else is going to do. <laughs> you know, don't, don't jump in. But I do feel you really have to have that attitude if you're going to go through this transformation of consciousness to, to really be tuned in and, and ready and willing to step forward in those opportunities. And, and that to me has made all the difference.